So what we have here is a basic 2,000 pound winch. Now, what I intend to do here is to alter this winch in such a way as it will pull in two directions, okay, rather than one. I'm going to disassemble the winch to the extent that I need. Now, first off, I'm going to have to get the, the wire, the cable off. And you can see already here that I've been experimenting with this winch. And what this here is, this is just PVC that was cut and put over the spool. The wire was let out and put over the spool so that um, I wouldn't go too far. I had a, a reason for using this winch in such a way as that the cable couldn't travel all the way over this bar. And so that's what this does. It limits how far the cable will come. Um, it's very easy to remove. This just this flexes out and will slide off. Uh, no problem. And it worked pretty good. So I'm going to start by removing these. And I'm going to remove, of course, the cable from the spools to begin with. And that's really the first thing that needs to be done. So I'm, I've got a small battery up here. Uh, being that it's unloaded, that small battery should be able to operate this and allow me to pull the cable off. going to remove those and then the final one okay so now when you get the cable all the way out, you've got a little set screw here that locks that cable into place. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my battery. So this is an Allen head, and I'm just using, you can use a regular L-shaped Allen if you want. And I just loosen that up, and hopefully that will pull out. Now, mine has some um, heat shrink material on this because I'd had this cable off before. And uh, so there's heat shrink on it at the end. Rather than having it all just kind of unravel, I put the heat shrink on it, then cut it. And uh, it holds it together. So now we've got to separate this spool from the main assembly using an Allen wrench here. Okay, yes. So I've been able to separate it. This geared shaft runs all the way out and allows me to disengage if I want because it pulls that gear up into see. So when it when you pull on that and disengage, you're actually pulling that gear out of play. That other way this can turn either way. I don't know if you can see that or not. This little pin right here, I'm going to have to knock that out so that that can come through. Okay, so what first has to happen is that knob needs to come off. And then I need to take and remove this spring because, see, that spring is locking it in. So 
I'm going to take that off. Phillips screwdriver. Together. Then that spring is off. Probably should mount this in a vise. Okay, I got the pin out right there. Okay, now I gotta keep pressure on this gear pushing down. Now I can pull that out and I can ease that off. Now that'll slide out with the spring. What I'm going to do is have two cables coming. So this side is turning. Got a cable on this side. This side is turning. It's tightening up on the cable. A second cable on this side would be turning but it would be loosening up as it's coming off the top. This side is pulling tight, this side's pulling up. When this side pulls tight, this one would be letting loose. Okay, so two separate cables in there. So I'm going to try to recreate this little locking mechanism for the cable. So if the cable goes in, it'll be uh, locked down. Now I've got holes drilled for my cable to go through. See, there's my original factory one, and this is the one I've added, and a set screw. Uh, this is just straight drill, but this has to be tapped for your set screw. So this is what I've come up with for separators on the hub. They'll go underneath the clamp and stick out in such a way as it'll keep the, the two sides separate as far as the cable is concerned. So there it is right there. So one cable will be on one side of this and the other cable will be on the other side. So there it is with the cable on it. And you see how it comes out the bottom here, out the top on this side, okay? So it will pull in two directions. And you want the cable fairly snug, as snug as you can get it. If you can't get it as snug as you want, uh, you might use a turnbuckle on the, in the cable. Um, what I did was I took all my fittings loose so that they were threaded out, right? I even took the um, back nut uh, bolt off the uh, winch, loosened the front one so that the winch could tilt forward giving me a little slack then after i made all my connections then i tightened everything up took all the the slack out and i've got a fairly fairly decent um connection there now when you pull in one direction the cable may go a little slack but you don't want it to be so slack that it uncurls. That's the problem that you will run into if you've got too much slack. So you want it as tight as can be. I also made these cables. You notice that the cables do not fill up the, the uh, uh, drum here very much. Okay, you can see from the, from the back plate to the center of the winch, it's, it's less than two feet. Okay, so... With my links and everything, I cut those at six feet, both of them, six feet. And the reason for, for it is on one, one side or the other, 
you can use the power of the winch to coil it up. Okay? But the other one you've got to hand do. All right? Because if you try to use the power on it, you're going to have one coming loose while the other one's tightening up. And you, you've got to get down to the point where you've got this fine of adjustment where you don't have too much slack there. Anyway, I hope you understand that. So I'm going to try to show you a demonstration here. What if I could pull downward as well as lift upward? Now, you can see that there's no tractor hooked up here, okay? I haven't received the tractor yet, so uh, I've been working on this, uh, and I'm at a point where I can at least demonstrate it to you. You couldn't do that with a normal winch. So, if you want to take your loader to the next level, or if you're in the middle of building a loader, and you've decided to use a winch, consider this possibility. And with a little bit of pulley system and such, you could actually allow your arms to go up and down as well, not just gravity fed and pressure down. A couple of side points here. Because I have no idea of what kind of winch you have, I can't advise you on specifics. This is an example uh, to show you what is needed. It's hopefully inspirational. You may actually come up with a better way of accomplishing the same task. So in any case, I hope you liked it. I hope it was inspirational. And I hope you will subscribe and click that like button. Thank you so much for watching.